Hey everybody, this is Elisa, and I'm going to quickly show you how you can use SoftChalk Create or SoftChalk Cloud to create lessons for your students to do in the online environment. So one of the things that we like to do when we teach online is to make sure that our students are learning things but also engaging with the content. So many times we will give them something to read or even a video to watch and we're really not clear if they're reading it or watching it and in a lot of cases they're not. So instead of just presenting content for students to read, which they may choose to skip, I like to create content where students are engaging with the content, where they are answering questions and even maybe doing some activities that can help them comprehend. Now these aren't tests, they are just activities and what I like most about it is they're self-graded and automatically added to the gradebook. So when I take attendance each week, I take attendance in an online class, yes. I use these lessons to show me that students have been into the class and have done things. So let me show you how it works. Okay, so I have here a Soft Chalk Create, which is the program that you can download to your computer to create these lessons. Uh, you can also use the online version where you can edit and create in the cloud, but it doesn't have all the features. So I like to just use the downloaded program. And so we can get all the logistics from the CTLE later. I just want to show you how this works. So I want to create a lesson on argumentation. So I need to get some content first. Now I can write my own content, which I'm very capable of doing, or I could find content that someone else has already created, vet it, and use that. So let's do that. So one of the things I like to do is search the internet. Google is my friend, but I like to search for OER content, Open Educational Resources. So when I did an OER source for argumentative writing, I came across Wikibooks, which is open books for an open world. And basically they have a lot of content that I could use to create a lesson on argument. What is an argument? It's all laid out and formatted so nicely. Isn't that the, uh, nice? And so I'm going to use this content. I also found on the OER Commons a video that I think might be a pretty good video to add to my lesson as well. So I want my students to watch this also. So let's start with the uh, content that I found first. And this is how easy it is. I'm just going to cut and paste this. I'm going to go to the top part here, what is an argument, and I'm just going to scroll all the way down and grab as much of this as I want. So I'm just going to do to the conclusion. So control C, copy, and now I'm going to go back to my soft shot create lesson and I'm going to do control V paste and boom I have content in here. That was easy right? But I know what you're thinking. You're like what's the difference from them reading this and reading what was on the web page? Well here's the difference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now modify this content so that it's presented in smaller chunks. So I want for students to read the first part what is an argument Okay, so that ends about right here. So I'm going to go control enter and now I've created a page break. And so the next part is the introduction and I'm going to go here and control enter and now I have another page break. So I'm going to go ahead and go down and finish all of my page breaks and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I added all of my page breaks after each section. And so if I go up to preview and view in a browser, it's going to ask me to save it. And now my lesson pops up and I have eight pages to this lesson. And so now I have presented the content in a little bit smaller chunks and I can arrow through this way to get to the different sections or I could click on the pages to get to the different sections. Okay, so you're still thinking, well, it's still just text, right? Okay, well, it is. But now what I can do is I can add in some more interactive elements to this lesson. So I have lots of choices. So let's go back to SoftChalk and look at my choices. Okay, so just with the uh, text. So I had that video that I found earlier. And so what I can do is if I click up here where it says insert, I have the option to insert images, bookmarks, hyperlinks, media, widgets, iframes, call out boxes, etc. Okay, and in this case, I wanna add a widget because I'm gonna add that video to the very first thing. So this box will pop up and it's just going to ask for me to get the HTML from my widget. So if you, most of you are familiar with YouTube, you can grab the embed code and insert it here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click share. I'm going to hit this, copy the embed code, 
and now I'm going to go back here and cut, put it in here. So now I have my video. Now I need to give this video a name and then go ahead and say OK. And so now I have this video. And if I were to preview again, OK, and the students will be able to play it. In this presentation, we'll talk about the elevator. OK, so now I still have this boring just text in a video. There's nothing engaging about this. So let's go back to Soft Chalk and look at some of the other options that I have. I can add quiz poppers. And for a quiz popper, I can ask essay questions. I can ask a feedback question, matching, multiple answer, multiple uh, blanks, multiple choice, ordering, sequence completion, short answer, true, false. So I don't want this to be a quiz, but I do want for students to demonstrate that they've looked at some of the content and give me some information back. So at the bottom of this page, I can add in a quiz popper and say for this one, I just want to ask a quick true false question. So that opens up. Okay, so I just added what distinguishes an argument from a descriptive essay or report is that the argument must take a stance. So that is true. I'd say that it's one point and it's not a quiz, so I'm going to allow them to retry it. And then I want to give them some feedback, say, um, sorry, that's incorrect for the wrong answer. And then for the correct answer, I'm going to say, right, good job. I don't want to show them the correct answer because I want for them to figure it out, but they can keep trying until they get it right. So, And then I just hit display and I'm going to embed it in the lesson and say, OK. All right, so now I have that one quiz question here. And so when I go back to preview my lesson again in the browser, now at the bottom of this page, I have my little quiz popper. And so the students can answer and they could say true and check their answer and they say, yay, good job. And then at the top, it will keep score, score one of one. If there were more questions in here, it might say one of 10. And then students can finish the lesson to get to the other ones. Okay, so I could go down to each page and at the bottom of each page, I could add any type of activity that I wanted to add. So the activities or the quiz poppers, but activities are more like flashcards, drag and drop, did you know, I could even add a crossword puzzle, jigsaw puzzle, labeling, pairs. I mean, you can see the list is long of all the activities, different types of activities that you can add to help engage students. So I'm going to add a couple more quiz questions and some activities, and then I'm going to come back and show you what I've created. Okay, so I'm back. Now, after I got halfway through that lesson, I said, why am I making a lesson that I'm not going to use? So I'm just going to show you one that I've already created. So I'm in my 102 class, and as you can see, I have quite a few lessons. And like I said earlier in this video, I use my lessons uh, for attendance. So I give students one to two of these each week. And so if I go into the bibliographies lesson, the first thing that you see is the soft chalk score center. So I've added, I've created a lesson and I've added it into Canvas. And so as the instructor, when I click on that lesson, I will see the score center. So I could see my students over here on the left, what they scored, when they completed it, how many attempts that they took to complete it. And then if I wanted to see what they, how they responded, I can click on this to see the students' answers. Now, when the students click on the link, they go over into the lesson. And so they will see this lesson. So you see a couple of things that you didn't see in the lesson that I was creating. One, I have a clear uh, title for my lesson and what class it's in. I also have in the table of contents titles, and it doesn't just say page one, page two, page three. And that's nice as well. So you can see up here that I have a score of zero to eight. I can choose which side of the page I want this table of contents to be on and if I want it to go away I can make it go away as well and so students can click through so in this particular lesson I've put a question on the front page and if students answer that question it'll tell them if it's right or not and then they can go on to the next question or they can simply do it again okay and so on this page Works as you can see reference. I've added some audio so all I'm doing is just reading what is written on the text. Students can read, but sometimes it's nice just to have to mix it up a little bit. So I recorded some audio for each of these pages so they can either listen or read. So you don't have to worry about transcripts for that because it's the same as what's written here. And then another quiz question. And as students go through, 
they are presented with some audio, so, some text, and questions. And so by the time they get all the way towards the bottom, I've even added in some images. So in this particular case, I added this image so students can see exactly uh, the color coding that I want for them to use as they write this assignment. And then they're using Noodle tools. So I can also embed a video that I created with uh, showing them how to use Noodle tools to create their annotated bibliography. And then after they've watched that video, I have some more questions for them to answer. Okay, and so once they've finished that, their scores will automatically be scored and they will show up here in the Score Center. But they also show in your Canvas gradebook. So you create your assignment in Canvas, add the soft chalk lesson into it, students complete the lesson, everything gets automatically scored and added to your gradebook. And if you want more information, then you can go into what I'm looking at right now, the Score Center. So that's pretty much it. If you need more help, Go ahead and contact the CTLE and we'll work something out to get you started with soft chalk.